Hello and welcome to Conquering Alba, where we take you to the historical places that help make Scotland what it is today. Today we are in the heart of Glasgow, as we visit Glasgow Cathedral. Glasgow Cathedral is a parish church of the Church of Scotland in Glasgow. It is the oldest cathedral in mainland Scotland and one of the oldest buildings in Glasgow. It was opened in 1197. The cathedral was the seat of the Archbishop of Glasgow and the mother church of the Archdiocese of Glasgow and the province of Glasgow until the Scottish Reformation in the 16th century. Glasgow Cathedral and St Magnus Cathedral in Orkney are the only medieval cathedrals in Scotland to have survived the Reformation virtually intact. The medieval bishop's castle stood to the west of the cathedral until 1789. The cathedral is dedicated to St Mungo, the patron saint of Glasgow whose tomb lies at the centre of the building's lower church. The first stone cathedral was dedicated in 1136 in the presence of King David I. Fragments of this building have been found beneath the structure of the present cathedral, which was dedicated in 1197, although much of the present cathedral dates from a major rebuilding in the 13th century. It is said that St Mungo had brought the body of a holy man for burial at the site named Cathurs, which became known as Glasgow. St Mungo built a monastic cell in the burial ground, 
and was buried in his church there in 614. His shrine in the lower church of Glasgow Cathedral was an important place of pilgrimage in the medieval period. Little is known about the early church buildings except they would have been made of a timber construction. Overlooking Glasgow Cathedral, we can see the Glasgow Necropolis. Edward I of England visited the cathedral in August 1301 during the First War of Scottish Independence, making offerings over four days at the High Altar and the Tomb of St Mungo. Following the killing of John Coleman at Greyfriars Dumfries in February 1306, Robert the Bruce hurried to Glasgow where he met with Robert Wishart, the warrior Bishop of Glasgow, in whose diocese the murder had been committed. Wishart granted Bruce absolution and urged the clergy throughout the land to rally to him, before accompanying Robert to Schoon, where he was crowned as King Robert I. In 1175, Pope Alexander III recognised Glasgow as a special daughter of Rome, freeing the Archdiocese from the supremacy of the Archbishop of York. Around the same time, Bishop Jocelyn was granted a charter by William I to establish Glasgow as a borough of barony, but with the privileges of a royal borough. The King attributed the birth of his only son, Alexander, to the intersection of St Mungo. All around the cathedral, we see Glasgow's coat of arms, although not many of us know the story behind it. A bird, a bell, a fish and a tree. Each has its own significant reason for being included. All four of the symbols depicted in the coat of arms are attributed to the legend regarding St Mungo, the patron saint of Glasgow. Given how long ago St Mungo lived his life, the stories and legends of his time can vary. Most people remember the symbols depicting his relationship with Glasgow by the following short poem. There's the tree that never grew. There's the bird that never flew. There's the fish that never swam. There's the bell that never rang. The tree is the first symbol in the rhyme and references St Mungo's early days. Legend has it that he was tasked with watching over a fire at the refectory in a monastery while he was still a young boy. When he fell asleep, some other boys who were jealous of him decided to put out the fire. When he woke up and found the fire extinguished, Mungo broke off some frozen branches from a hazel tree 
and prayed over them until they burst into flames, restoring the fire. Interestingly, the tree is represented in the coat of arms in the form of a strong, tall oak tree, despite the fact that popular versions of the tale reference a hazel branch. The bird that never flew commemorates a wild robin who was tamed by St. Serf while Mungo was still in Fife. Sadly, the robin died, something which some legends attribute to the cruel actions of one of St. Mungo's young peers who was jealous of him. Desperate to make his friend and mentor St. Serf happy again, Mungo took the dead bird and prayed over his body and it was able to come back to life. The third part, The Fish That Never Swam, is one of the longest and most convoluted stories of St Mungo's life. It includes the King of Strathclyde, his wife the Queen and a knight. In the story, the King gave his wife a ring as a gift. She in turn gave it to the knight, perhaps her lover, who almost instantly lost the ring. The King demanded soon after to see the ring, threatening to kill the Queen if she could not present it to him. The knight confessed what had happened to St Mungo, who sent a monk into the Clyde to catch a fish. When the monk returned, the fish was cut open and inside the ring was found. The image of the fish which appears today is based on the seal of the Bishop of Glasgow, which was designed around 1271, which shows a salmon with a ring in its mouth. And finally, the bell that never rang, is one story less explicitly linked to the saint. It is thought that the bell in question may have been given to St Mungo by the Pope. By the 15th century, the handbell had become a symbol synonymous with the city of Glasgow. Following this legend in 1450, John Stuart, known as the first provost of Glasgow, left a bell ring out for his soul. The replacement bell purchased in 1641 remains in display in the city. <laughs>